Welcome uh, back to our show. Thank you for, for doing talk with us, and thank you for doing the song with us earlier. <laughs> I, I appreciate that. Sing, you singing Margarita was something I, I don't think everyone thought would, we would see. Uh, I want to talk to you about going on tour. Uh, you're, you're, you're about to start off, kick off another tour. Are you excited? Are you preparing? What are you doing? Um, yeah, I'm so, I'm so excited to play again because um, there was just... Yeah, there was a period of time where I thought, I was like, oh, do I need to, like, find another job? <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, I guess yeah. during the pandemic also... Yeah, all was... kind of singing and performing was gone, and that's kind of all I've really known. Um, but what's really funny about it, we've done some shows, and because the last two years feel like I've kind of blinked, our last show was in 2019, and so when I came back to play again, I was like, wait, was I just here? Did this just happen? But it's been... Do you know what's the nicest thing is going and seeing everyone who come to the shows? Because they make such an effort and everybody dress up. The Florence and the Machine show is like a fully immersive experience. Yeah, I've seen people dress up like yeah. you. <laughs> like identically. And they actually, yeah, I, I've, I've seen it. But it's nice for me because I play a show and I also get to watch a show. Because like <laughs> the whole front row will just be in these amazing outfits. Um, what did it... I think Rolling Stone described it as like... Euphoria meets the Renaissance Fair. <laughs> it, it, it is <laughs> Which a was a really good, accurate description, I Yeah, I take that. But I mean, look at this, by the way. Look at this picture. This is how, this is how cool you are. Come on. Okay. I mean, that's your move. I love that. Gorgeous. And I was like, okay, I love that that's your move. I think that's always good. I go, I wonder how long you've been doing that. And, uh, and I got, actually, I found a baby photo of you. And here's, here's baby Florence with your mom, Evelyn. Look at the, look at the, the flower there crown. There's already a flower crown. You were always in the flower I crowns. I know, always in a flower crown. Born in one, will be buried in one, I think. <laughs> <laughs> be buried in one. I, you, you were saying, too, I go, uh, I go the, where did the, your kind of uh, thing come from? Where did your whole like, identity come from with Florence and the Machine? Um, so, I think... I don't know, I was thinking a lot about this and I sometimes wonder if the whole thing of Florence the Machine is like an amalgamation of things that I loved when I was a kid. So I feel like Florence the Machine is a mix of like Rogue from X-Men with a Victorian ghost and then like mermaids. Yeah. And I wonder if one day I'll wake up and I'm back in my childhood bed and it was a dream. I just kind of like made it up. Oh wow, and you made um, it up. Yeah. I love that I'm in your dream. This is awesome. Yeah, <laughs> I know. I best thing I've heard all week. <laughs> Uh, I looked it up because I was like, oh, Rogue from X-Men. I just wanted to look it up and see what it is, and I, I kind of get it. But it was I, uh, I see this. It was Redhead, so it was like Rogue from X-Men, The Little Mermaid, uh, Anne of Green Gables, Pippi Longstocking was huge for me. Oh, yeah. Um, so, yeah. Like, what were the early gigs like for you? Do you remember where you started out? What was one of your first gigs? Um, okay, so a lot of my first gigs gigs. Yeah, sorry. Gigs were, I just kind of pretended I had a band and I didn't really have a band, but there was, yeah, so there's a lot of imagination that goes on. There's a lot of pretending, as you can see. So Florence the Machine kind of started out with everyone in the South London indie scene all had bands. And so I would just show up to these club nights and be like, yeah, I have a band. I have a band too. And that's how I got booked for my first show by pretending I had a band that I didn't have. I, right, had, so I had no band members. I had a name. I had the name of the band and saying I had a band, but there were no members of this band. I had to find some members. But what would happen when you show. get booked? You're like, hey, I just got booked. I need someone to play with me. That was exactly what happened, because I got booked for my first show by auditioning uh, in a nightclub toilet and saying I had a band and just singing. Wow. Uh, and then I was like, I need to find a guitar player, because I have a show in a week. <laughs> And I was like on a bill, yeah. Isn't so it funny that... like, the stories, like oh, no one knows all the stories and the hard work and the hustling. You had to audition in a toilet to get where you are. No, I did. Yeah, but bathrooms have very good acoustics. They do actually. So, yeah, yeah, you are right. They you really, are. They really uh, do. Dance Fever comes out this Friday. Um, it's beautiful. It's fun. It's uh, there's bangers on here. There's like uh, I think my jam right now is I like Free right now is what I'm jamming out too. But uh, I love it so much. You've been working on this for a few years. I started working on it in 2019. Like, as soon as kind of the last record, that cycle ended, I... The album is kind of about that fever of creativity. So as soon as I finished playing the last show, it was like all these songs arrived in 2019. And I, 
I set off to New York in January, end of February 2020, just thinking, this is going to go so well. Wow. <laughs> Boy, were you wrong. Wow. wow. I was like, this is going to go so well. I, I had three months booked in Electric Lady. Um, oh, I'd yeah. been, yeah, I, we had, I had so many songs written already. I was like, you know what? I think we could just get this done fast. I really think this is going to be easy, this one. Um, and then, and then my mum called, and my mum never calls me because she's very busy. Uh, <laughs> uh, she only calls me if something, I don't know if anyone else has it, but she only called, if I looked down, I was like, oh my God, something terrible must have happened. If somebody <laughs> died, like, why, why is she? The only reason why mom calls is uh, Yeah, I'm just like, oh my God, it's Professor Evelyn Welsh. Like, why? I was, I was thinking about this story before I came about the album. I was like, I need to look at my phone because she can't actually be Professor Evelyn Welsh in my phone. Like, she should be mum. Mum, yeah. It's a, does she change the she's content? N she's not in my phone. She, I've full named her. It comes up as Evelyn Welsh, and I don't... I'm like, that's the most British thing I've ever done. <laughs> like, that is very why, British of you. Why You're, don't I have my mum in my phone? Your own mum, mom, yeah. Oh, yeah. Like, or mum, yeah. Oh, Evelyn Welsh is calling. Time <laughs> to go. And she was like, hey, this is serious. Get home. She's a, well, I think I maybe I full named her because she is... She's quite a serious person. Yeah. And she was like, yeah. You should you should come home now. But um, we also thought we were like, oh well, I'll be I'll be back in a month. Like yeah. see you then. No, I didn't actually get back to New York to work with Jack for a year and a half. I think we all thought that. Yeah. Like, oh, this is going to be finished in a couple of weeks and <laughs> cut to two and a half years later. Yeah. Uh, it turned out unbelievable, and we need entertainment. We need good music. We need solid stuff. Uh, this is, uh, and uh, you said Jack, Jack Antonoff. Yeah, Jack Antonoff and myself and Dave Bailey produced uh, it. Talented people right there. Uh, you're doing, uh, which song are you doing tonight for us? Uh, my Love. Yeah. And uh, how, uh, do you want to set that up? What's My Love about? Um, it started off as just a really sad poem. But if when I tried to put it acoustically, it was too sad it was just like this is too bleak so really? um yeah i couldn't it was just sort of i needed something to kind of um turn the sadness on its head and add some euphoria i needed yes. catharsis at that time and so yeah me and um dave bailey were who was also at that point stuck at home having the biggest hit of his career and doing all of his interviews from his kitchen so we got together and kind of made this song and it's a jam so get ready guys it's unbelievable dance fever is out this friday florence will be performing later in the show florence welsh everybody hey, hey.